Hello, and welcome to Pulumi TV. My name is Mike Matrall. In today's episode, we're going to show you how to get started with integration testing of your Pulumi infrastructure stacks. Let's begin. In this episode, we're going to cover the following topics. First, we'll start off by deploying two different stacks in Pulumi. The first one is going to be an AWS S3 bucket implemented using TypeScript. The second stack is going to be a GKE Kubernetes cluster and an Nginx application implemented using Python. And then lastly, we're going to write integration tests for both stacks using the Pulumi integration testing framework and Go tests. As always, you can follow along with our code by visiting the Pulumi TV repo on GitHub. Let's jump into the code. We'll start with the AWS S3 bucket example in TypeScript. As always, we'll import the packages that we need using the package manager of our choice. In this case, we've pulled the packages down using NPM. With the AWS package, we can create and define a new bucket called my bucket. With that bucket created, we can actually place a new object into that bucket with the contents hello world. Lastly, we'll export the name so we know which bucket to reference this is a pretty straightforward example. So let's jump over to the GKE example written in Python. Much like in TypeScript, our Pulumi stack here is gonna start off by importing the packages that we need to instantiate a GKE cluster. We pull these packages down using pip. With the packages in our local repository, we can create and define settings for the cluster, create and define the cluster itself, and create and define the GKE kubeconfig we need to access the cluster once it's actually up and running. With the cluster created, we can then deploy an Nginx deployment into that cluster along with a service that is a public load balancer to front it, so that way we can actually hit the endpoint and verify that it worked. With both stacks established, let's see how we actually test each of these stacks using our Go integration testing framework. Much like any other Go test, we're going to write a test Go file. In it, we're going to first start off by importing the packages that we need. The primary one we need to use the Pulumi integration testing framework is the following one located on our GitHub repo. Let's start off by checking out how we would write a test to test the S3 bucket stack. If you'll see, you'll notice that we use the same testing instantiation, just like usual Go test do. And we actually wrap a couple of base options on the testing instantiation to tailor it to the stack's configurations. How does the stack know what properties it needs to use? That is what the program test option struct is about. Let's see what that looks like by jumping us into its documentation. In program test options, you have a multitude of settings and configurations you can tailor to your stack's necessities. You can see that you can set the directory in which the stack is running in, any dependencies that must be installed, depending on the language used, configuration settings for the stack itself, secrets, any changes you want to make after the fact. And more importantly, the extra runtime validation is a function that we're going to use to test each of these stacks for validity in what we're expecting it to be. There's many options here, and we explore to check these out to see what would be suitable to capture the scenarios you would like to test. Let's jump back to the actual test on the left. So with the base options established, which are just a set of settings that we want to apply to all of these tests, we don't have to necessarily do this. This is optional, but it allows us to condense shared properties across multiple tests. So with the base options established, we're going to tweak some more settings, supply to region, and the stack is up and running once this test actually kicks off. But more importantly, we have not established the extra runtime validation. Before we do so, let's examine what the test in Python for the GKE cluster using Nginx looks like. As you can see, we have a similar test established with the same base options. We'll tweak it a little bit just to make sure its configuration settings match what we expect it in our GCP account. And likewise, we have yet to implement our extra runtime validation. Both of these tests will go through the motions of previewing, installing the updates, 
setting the configuration variables, doing the updates of the actual Pulumi stacks, and destroying the stacks, and all of these parameters are configurable. But once all of those are done, then once the update completes is when the extra runtime validation kicks in, and that allows us to actually examine and test the stack that was stood up. So let's actually implement some of these. So we'll start off with the S3 bucket one. Our simple solution is gonna be, since we created a bucket, and we put an object into it, let's just see that when we get buckets, they're not going to be empty. So we'll start off by saying, we're gonna import the AWS uh, packages um, by creating a new session. Um, so we'll create a new session. In that, we're gonna define our configuration for a region to use. We're going to import the packages that we need to actually make sure that this code works. So with the session established, let's actually make use of it. We're going to create a new S3 client that makes use of the session. That service client is going to be s3.new on the session. And we're going to pull a list of the buckets by saying the result and an error is being set to the services list buckets operation with no particular parameters. We just want to see if we get buckets back. If there are no errors, we'll be fine. But if there is an error where you want to throw an error on the testing error, it says we're unable to list buckets. And if we have no error, we want to do an assertion that we don't have empty bucket lists. And we'll pass in the results object and say a message buckets should buckets list should not be empty. So that is all set. Let's go ahead and open all of these folds. And we can see that we are close to, oh, we have an error here. There we go. We have all the pieces in place to create a session to AWS, and then leverage that session to communicate with an S3 client that'll allow us to list buckets and validate that they're not actually empty. Similarly, let's create a runtime validation check for the GKE cluster. So in this cluster, as you'll remember, we deployed an Nginx deployment and a publicly facing service load balancer that we want to verify is actually up and has the contents we expect it to have in its HTTP body. So we'll go into the extra runtime validation and implement that now. So we'll say the endpoint can be pulled out of the stack that we have here because this function that we're defining here allows us to pass in uh, and close over the stack information that is outputted when the stack is run through the integration testing framework. So we'll say in that stack, give me all of the outputs and we want particularly the external IP of the output and we'll assert that to a string. With the endpoint, we're gonna establish a max weight of 10 minutes, time.minute times 10. And we have some helper, for, hum, helper functions that allow us to assert that we are getting an HTTP 200 from the endpoint that we're visiting and that we're going to then take a step further and validate the contents of that body response. So we'll say assert HTTP result with retry. We'll pass in our testing object, the endpoint, uh, nil, the max wait time, and a function that we're gonna define just now for the body of how we want to handle that. And that encompasses saying we want to return the assertion that our body contains 
the string welcome to nginx as famously displayed by default nginx configurations. And we'll add the missing parentheses. All right, great. So let's revisit. We have an AWS S3 bucket written in TypeScript. This bucket is created and then an object is put into it. In our second stack, we have a GKE cluster running in GCP. Once that cluster is up, we're going to communicate with it by deploying an Nginx deployment and a service with the public load balancer. We can capture both of these stacks in Go tests by defining them here as test objects using the integration testing framework from Pulumi. And we can then take a step further and do runtime validation of these stacks to verify that they're running as we expect them. With that set, let's actually run our tests. This is as simple as saying go test dash V in the current directory. This will kick off a chain of tests, much like any other Go testing framework. As you'll see, we're going to go through the various steps that you would imagine, but the integration testing framework is handling all of the, the operations that you normally would when interacting with a Pulumi stack, such as installing the dependencies, using uh, pipn for the Python GCP project, using yarn for the TypeScript one, we're initializing the project, we're setting configuration settings, we're performing the previews and updates, and more so, as this continues, we'll get more output and more feedback. So there you go, the first test for the S3 bucket passed. We were able to verify that the bucket was not only created, but that when we did a fetch on the buckets, that the bucket list was not empty. The GKE cluster will take a couple more minutes since it takes five or six minutes for a cluster to come up and for the application to deploy. And so we've gone ahead and ran this test already in a previous screen, and we've shown you what that looks like when the output is complete. As you can see, both tests pass. We have the S3 bucket that verifies that our buckets returned are not empty, and that we have the ability to examine Nginx by fetching into its public load balancer that we get and doing an HTTP 200 and returning the body to examine its contents. That assertion is simply stated here in a couple of helper functions that allows us to do HTTP uh, gets with retries. And all we're essentially doing here is doing those retries on, on a back off timer base that allows us to ensure that we actually are hitting the host and we are getting a status code of HTTP 200 to then process the body as we've done here with examining that welcome to Nginx is existing. With that, we hope we've learned a lot in how to integrate and test all of your stacks in Pulumi and how Pulumi can be used to instantiate different stacks for different languages and how we can leverage the Go integration testing framework to tie all these together and val validate and verify your infrastructure is operating as you expect it. That's all we have for today. Thank you for your time and have a great day.